It's funny because it's not exactly, if you try to play along to it, it's not exactly in the key of G or G sharp or A. It kind of lives in this land of the in-between, just, you know. Microtones. Back in the day of recording, maybe they tuned to a guitar that was slightly sharp, flat, you know. Um, so I kind of had come up with my own way of playing it. It was just interesting to see how it actually was played, you know, because I can't find footage really of, you know, a shot of Wayne's guitar exactly how he's playing it. You know, so I had to come up with my own uh, version of it. Remember, this was way back in history before um, these ubiquitous, wonderful machines that we have that tell us we're in tune or not. Uh, we would tune up to a harmonica. But by the time we got ready to make the MC5's third album, we had reconciled our ability to produce a, a dynamic, you know, just earth-shattering live performance along with being creative in the recording studio. So the process, you know, was Fred brought in a completely formed idea, lyrics and guitar parts, and we sorted out the rhythm section and I sorted out my parts and uh, we went in the studio and cut it and then Tyner discovered <laughs> how high the key was and he nailed it. I mean, he nailed it, but he came back in the studio and he says, yeah, I sound like Rough Trade from Venus. Um, which immediately entered our lexicon. Michael Davis put the backing vocals on and uh, th that's, that's how the tune came to be. Wayne today decided to, um, you know, have it so both of us took a solo on it, just extend that solo section. I really like the solo that's on the recording. It just flows really nicely with, you know, everything else going on. Um, and then when it hits that part with the, the big D chord and the climbing harmony, uh, riff too, like it gets super melodic there and playful. Um, I, th I think the solo was perfect the way it was. Um, so it made me kind of, you know, nervous to attempt my own. Um, but it's just, you know, since the song has so much energy and it's just a lot of attitude, soloing over it's just fun. That solo that he's referring to on the record is Fred Smith. Oh, Fred, wow. yeah, I didn't play that. I, I I, I'm no playing. Idea. I'm playing my poor man's version of Fred's solo. Uh -huh. I'm doing the best I can with it. Uh -huh. But Fred really, he composed, the solo is, is well composed. It's thought out. It's, he didn't do that in the moment. He had his ideas prepared in advance. And it's a rockin' tune. It, if you play it right, it's, it's pretty strong. The intro is done with the tremolo effect on and it's done here. I'll play it once without the tremolo so you can hear the notes. It's and then the, the tune begins. That's the first section. The second section, so the one guitar player is playing. Leads us into the, the pre-chorus. Uh, it's just instrumental, the vocal doesn't come in yet, which is a D chord with an ascending um, harmonized line, which is So that figure plays three times. At the end of the fourth one, we, we strike a D seventh chord. So it goes. That's what you're hearing. And that last chord that doesn't sound like the other chords. So that takes us in, that leads us into the verse section uh, and the vocal comes in. And the verse, there's two guitar parts there. And the first the one part, uh, kind of the, the, the main part, is done with this G figure, which is all fifths, but on the top of the guitar neck, not on the bottom. So a tempo, it's.
we're coming out of the verse. This is the second half. And then the second guitar part that goes underneath that is down here on the lower strings. What, sometimes I'll play it this way. And sometimes I'll play it. That's just the feel thing that I, I decide in the moment. One, two, three. So that's, that's the Fred Smith solo. Apologies to Fred for butchering his solo. Um, and then I'll play the rhythm guitar and Waylon can play what he played on it. One, two, one, two, three. Excellent. It's unorthodox, as is a lot of MC5 material. Uh, you know, there are kind of these rock conventions that we've always tried to avoid. Trying to spread the, uh, the music around the world a little bit and show um, other musicians and regular civilians um, how, to, how to play these things. You know, they, these things, they're difficult, but they're not impossible. And these are things that anyone can master if you practice your guitar um, consistently. The whole trick, you could do it for 30 minutes a day, but you have to do it every day. If you do that every day, if you work on these tunes every day, you'll get better. And although you may never be as good as Waylon, <laughs> you'll get better. <laughs> thank you, Waylon. Of course, thank All you for right. having me. Let's get a photo. Let's do it.